Thank you uh, very much, everybody, for, for your tenacity in this uh, long session here. I realize I'm the next to last obstacle to the ne next round of refreshments, so I'll be very short. Um, thank you also to Biostock, because you're choosing this particular location, because I calculated that 17 years ago, I was standing on exactly this same spot for AstraZeneca in those days, uh, respiratory diseases, uh, talking about the neurotransmitter GABA, and life is a big circle, so now I stand again here talking about GABA as a neurotransmitter, this time with a completely different approach to, to drug discovery. So if I get the right slides. Right, so I'm going to talk a little bit uh, uh, a history of GABATER, of our lead compound, GT002. I give you a little bit of an overview of the competitive landscape uh, within uh, psychiatry, which is where we work in, and a little bit of an outlook of GABATER, where we stand right now, and it's a very, very exciting time to work at GABATER. Actually, it always is, but now it's particularly exciting. So GABATER, the name GABATER, GABA Therapeutic Works on very specific, we are not a indication company, we're not like an oncology company, but we will work only on one receptor, the most important receptor in, in the human brain, in the inhibitory, the inhibitory neurotransmitter system. And uh, uh, we have, from the very beginning on, our idea was the following. We didn't have a big, uh, like AstraZeneca, big library to screen or, or to test. But we wanted from the very beginning on very quickly move into the clinic because we know that difference between preclinical and uh, clinical biotech is huge. So we uh, short-circuited basically the drug discovery process by testing our compounds in the, in the relevant models, but without any bias towards finding uh, proper results, but just testing in the different models. And then from the effect in that given model, we went towards the indication, so a little bit backwards, but very effectively. So our aim is to become uh, a GABA-A receptor uh, uh, specific company. We will only work on this receptor system and only with ligands that work on that. And we are only going to work with CNS projects. So today we stand with the GT002, our lead compound in, uh, in schizophrenia. It's uh, effective in models of schizophrenia. And uh, we have a, a whole range of patterns uh, uh, on 002 and the two pattern groups for, for other compounds too. And uh, since we ha have different stages of development with follow-up compounds, we of course have spread the risk. So our target, as I said, is the GABA-A receptor with a molecule, GT002, and uh, it will be a first-in-class treatment of schizophrenia if we succeed. And having said that, the molecules originate from the University of Lund, actually. So it would be a very nice success story for getting innovation from basically academic research. The compound is uh, very, very potent, very, very selective, does not have any uh, tox effect, as we, as we could see. And it has an effect in both antipsychotic and in cognition and social behavior, which just makes it very interesting. For 002, just for the last year, quite a lot of uh, progress. And we have pushed the 002 so much because we want to use this, this project as an as a, as a engine to pull all the other programs from the preclinic to the clinic. Uh, key point was that we are listed on uh, First North since uh, April this year. We completed the GLP talk studies, which are very, very extensive, very, very expensive too. And we submitted on the uh, 23rd of September both the investigators brochure and the uh, IMPD, which is a dossier that follows the compound into the clinic to the uh, Finnish medical authorities, and they are currently reviewing our project. So we expect within a very, very short time, relatively short time, to get approval for the clinical trials before the end of the year. 
so there's not, not much time left. And, uh, and uh, this has been a tremendous, uh, tremendous effort and uh, really a great, great moment when we, when we submitted the, 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 the application. Still going on, then will be a, a start of a single ascending dose study, first in man. And I know from experience that uh, for a company and for a researcher, and my background is in research, it's a completely different ballgame if you are in preclinic or a clinic. And the same is true for if you speak to people from the financing world, and I've done this a number of times, usually you get the answer, oh, this is very nice, when will you be in the clinic? And when you are in the clinic, then you can come back to us. So that is why this is so extremely important for us. We're also working on, on continuation with, with other patents. So uh, our patent lawyer has this uh, approach that the patent series would be like an onion with different layers. So we're building on and protecting our, our, our IP assets and uh, it works very, very nice. And we are also uh, working with other compound groups and other indications, as you can see. We're interested in particular in antidepressants and anti-anxiety compounds for which this particular receptor can be very interesting. And also, uh, you know, psychiatric diseases are extremely common, but very little talked about. Everybody knows somebody that has problems with cancer, relative, friend, but very few people actually know somebody that admits to having severe depression, schizophrenia. All these diseases are unfortunately uh, tabooed in society, still to the day today. And uh, that's why not only are the models difficult for, for treating psychiatric diseases, but the progress in, the, in the, what's available as a, as a medical option has been very, very slow. And uh, again, that is why we have already now, for the proof of concept studies, secured a key opinion leader's interest in, uh, in, in running the, uh, the uh, proof of concept studies eventually. So, most important things that are coming up are the, are the uh, single ascending dose study, which is coming uh, by the end of this year, if everything goes well. And then finally, we will also add a multiple ascending dose study in, uh, in, in, the, in the next year with GT002. And then at the same time, of course, we continue working with our pipeline. And the reason that I have put all these different countries and different uh, contacts on, on this on the slide, it's just because we are a very small company and we depend totally on our network, on our contacts. And uh, we, in that sense, we're really a sort of global uh, company and uh, it has worked actually very, very well. Just the uh, management team and the researchers have, I think, more than 100 person years experience in this field altogether. So uh, we really live off that and, uh, and uh, have a very, very good network for continuing also expanding our indications. So how about the competitive landscape? I mean, I've seen on all the previous slides, there are always billions and billions and billions. Uh, I would say, you know, one can also reduce it everything that calculations as there's a huge unmet medical need in psychiatry, particularly schizophrenia. 1% of the world population develops schizophrenia, uh, the symptoms start at age 18 to 22. It's a lifelong disease. It cannot be treated. There's no, you can reduce the worst of the worst uh, symptoms, but you can certainly ne never relieve them. So one can just say that there's a lot of, uh, of drugs or a number of drugs that were used, uh, which are coming off patent. So there's new possibilities there. And there's new interest, of course, interest uh, in a project like ours is always from big, medium-sized pharma to fill their, their pipeline in, in psychiatry. And psychiatry is, uh, per se, a very risky indication area because the models that we use to predict the efficacy of our compounds are behavioral pharmacology, and that's inherently a very, very specialized field. Here, on, on, I want to show, to show that there are a huge number of uh, clinical trials going on. 
more or less uh, all the time within uh, the field of psychiatry and schizophrenia, but they focus on other receptor systems than the one that we target. And that's what, that is what would actually be a first in class compound. And just an example, upper left hand side, Sage Pharmaceuticals have made a deal, more than 500 million, uh, for a GABA A receptor ligand for the treatment of depression. And that, that was only markets in Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, I think. And uh, then the outlook for, for GABA chair, what we have built up now in the last couple of years, is a drug discovery process, and then we are, we are back at uh, AstraZeneca, which is a very simple process, a uh, very standardized process, and, uh, and the, um, the, our key, our innovative advantage actually knows lies in the, in the model that we're using to generate the new compounds to be tested in vitro and in vivo. So we will produce other clinical candidates other than GT002. And finally, from the point of view of, of Gabater, where we stand now, we transition from preclinic to clinic. Again, super important for us. But we also transition from having a project, GT002, to a pipeline. So we have actually our lab, which is feeding the pipeline. And this, uh, this, uh, the picture on the lower right-hand side I'm particularly proud of. Because I never forget the, it was the prototype of the drug that's actually going to give to the patient. And uh, I was uh, sitting in the office, the door, the door, doorbell rings, and uh, finally we had moved the project from being purely PowerPoint to something that we actually can give in patients. And it was also nice to, for me to hear that the patients group that are contacting us, asking about new drugs in business psychiatry, by themselves, the founders via the internet, so I think it's very important to, you know, keep an eye on the, one of the big stake, stakeholders in this whole drug discovery uh, uh, industry, which is the patient. And in the end, that's what, we want to, that's what we want to achieve, better treatment of the patients. And I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, like you said, you, you're moving now. You have something tangible here. You can actually touch it. You can touch it. Yeah. yeah. And um, the transition from a preclinical company into a clinical company. Normally, that's uh, well, it's a major step in the evaluation of a company as well. Yeah. Um, but there could also be challenges. How do you see the the balance here? Uh, well, this. I am not worried for this stage of the, uh, of the clinical development because it's only a single ascending dose study and multiple ascending dose studies. Mm. But from the um, perspective of the company, it's really not like day and night, but like very, very dim and very, very bright because all of a sudden you have a product that you can say, you know, this is what we have been working for, mm. rather than having a model or a technology or something, you know, very advanced. But again, you know, come back to us when you're in the clinic. I had that, heard this so many times. Mm. So what's going to change there in, in the dialogue with these, these the, the ones you're talking to, so to speak? Well, or have you already seen? An oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. It, it, very briefly after we had the press release that, uh, that we were going to apply for the clinical trials, then already, uh, you know, big, big medium-sized pharma comes and contacts you mm. and wants to get to know about the project because the process takes at least one year. Yeah. And so we'll be at uh, Bio in, uh, in, in Copenhagen in November. Mm. And there will actually be an extra session on neurosciences organized by Invest in Skåne mm. in association with uh, Bio in Copenhagen. But we're also going to present together with six other companies from the Skåne region mm. working in, uh, in CNS. Okay. That's going to that's gonna attract some attention for sure. Um, uh, you said that the, the GTO002 will be the, the engine that drives yes. your portfolio yes. forward. Uh, what's the main focus in the next steps, so to speak, of the, oh, f for, the, for the rest of the pipeline? For the rest of the carriages on the train? Hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, it, it'll be, uh, uh, again, 
other indications. It doesn't have to be the same. It depends on finding the, the, the right models to test these mm -hmm. compounds in. And, and we also have learned a lot from the GG002 journey. Mm -hmm. And so it's very nice because now we know exactly what not to do. Mm. And um, the switch of the list, you, you switched to Nasdaq. Uh, right. Uh, was that also a part of the strategy in attracting? Exactly, exactly, to make it uh, was more attractive for international because, I mean, uh, it's an international business. It's a worldwide disease mm. and it's a big, big pharma, most probably be interested in a partnering. Yeah. If it fits their, their, their pipeline at that stage. And um, your, your, your lead compound then is, is, is uh, definitely targeting a, a really, really big market, as you mentioned, like 1% yeah. uh, uh, of humanity. Um, that's significant business potential right there. And uh, you, have made, uh, you have actually done some background research evaluation from an external part last year, I think it was. Yeah. Valuation. And uh, Ventures, we're guessing, guessing then that the, the valuation, the result of that evaluation probably came out a bit higher than your current market cap. How will you address that in future negotiations? That I don't know. We can make a new evaluation. I mean, it's, uh, uh, the amount of guesswork, uh, the amount of uh, approximation is big enough to, you know, something we have to live with <laughs> for the evaluation. But, uh, I mean, the most straightforward will be actually a partnering agreement uh, for certain, like, like the one I showed on the, mm. on the Sage compound, mm. something like that, I would presume. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to uh, wish you good luck then on, I guess it's Bayer you're going to in November? Yeah, that's yeah. right, in Copenhagen, yeah. Okay. Good luck and I'll probably you. see you there. Okay. Thank you.